So in a recent video, we talked about fast dub techno, basically meaning high BPM dub techno. I think we went all the way up to around 159 beats per minute. So in this video, let's kind of do the opposite or maybe the complement to that and talk about some of the deepest of the deep dub techno. Now, for me personally, I call something ambient dub techno if it uses the sort of dub techno production techniques, but with very, very little emphasis on percussion, such that it's more appropriate for listening to on headphones rather than on a dance floor, for instance. Another way to think about this would be it prioritizes atmosphere over basically everything else. Now, we're not gonna cover this style comprehensively, but by the end of the video, you should have a pretty good idea what it sounds like and who are some artists whose work you should check out. So for an early example, let's take a track called Quadrant Dub by Basic Channel. I feel a little bit guilty talking about Basic Channel in essentially every video, but the truth is that even today, the entire genre essentially has its roots in their work. So we can hear that this track is definitely dub techno, but it's much slower and lower energy than the basic channel track that we talked about in the last video, a track called Philips Track, which is really high energy and quite fast. Instead, Quadrant Dub seems appropriate for listening to maybe at your desk or while lounging or going for kind of a calm, slow walk or something like that. So this track came out in 1994, which makes it one of the earliest examples of what might be called ambient dub techno. And I feel like it definitely had an influence on artists maybe like Yagya, who really specialize in this sound. But it wasn't the only example of kind of ambient leaning basic channel. There were also EPs like the Radiance EP that also explored this sound. But some of Mark and Moritz's other aliases might be better known for this sort of ethereal sound. Rhythm and Sound is the obvious one, but there's also the later records under their Rounds project. So the Rounds project, also known as Round 1, Round 2, etc., was a series of five records released between 1994 and 1999. Now, the earlier records are very, very much house-leaning. They don't really sound that dubby at all in comparison to, you know, the other sort of basic channel type projects. But by the end of the round project, you know, when you start talking about getting close to 1999, it sounds much more like rhythm and sound than anything else with a sort of atmospheric, ethereal, ambient kind of dub techno feel to it. But as much fun as it is to kind of talk through the canonical works that this duo released, let's move on to something else. So the next release I want to talk about is the One album by Pole, which was released in 1998. So Pole's early sound, and to a certain extent his contemporary sound, kind of combines elements from what might be called glitch or clicks and cuts or experimental with elements from dub techno, namely kind of echoing chords and textures and things like that. Some people refer to Pole style as minimal dub for this reason, which makes sense. And of course, this raises the question of if a track doesn't have a kick drum at all, is it really still dub techno? Or is it just kind of ambient or experimental that uses some sort of dubby elements to it? And this is of course a question that doesn't really have an answer. In any case, it's a fantastic album followed by two others in this same sort of style and format. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more abstract, I highly recommend it. Now, before we leave Germany to cover some artists from the rest of the world, there's one more EP that I kind of want to highlight because I think it's, it should be considered an absolute classic, but it often gets overlooked. This is the Ur EP by Kyo Dor. This came out on the Telray label in 2012 as a 10-inch vinyl record. Now, for those that don't know, I'm kind of obsessed with 7 and 10-inch records, so I had to make sure to get a physical copy of this one for that reason, uh, if nothing else. Now we've briefly mentioned Telray on this channel before, but as a refresher, Telray is a sub-label of the West German label Traum, and it released sort of some of the best dub techno between 2010 and 2014. The label is still considered operational, but that's at least when the majority of the records came out. Anyways, this is a super interesting release by Kyo, because normally her work is much more minimalistic and hypnotic, but this EP, on the other hand, kind of shows her versatility because it's very lush and textured. So let's expand outwards a bit geographically and talk about an artist from the US. So this track is by CB313 and is called Standing Still. And specifically, this is the reduced version, which means it's even more spaced out than the original. So 
So while this track didn't come out until 2011, it actually had its first version as sort of an entirely beatless ambient track all the way back in 1995. Stephen Hitchell had produced it under his Radius alias and sent it out to a variety of labels as a demo, including actually to the Deep Chord label. But what eventually ended up happening is it essentially just sat on a dat tape in Stephen's archives for the next 15 years until Stephen released it himself on the Equispace Detroit label. Apparently the motivation for this was he had just released his Beyond the Clouds EP and was looking for a similarly deep follow-up and decided that this was the right moment for this track. And finally, taking us up kind of to present day, we've got to talk about the most recent album by Fluxion, which came out on his record label called Vibrant Music. As many of you know, Fluxion is a Greek producer who started releasing on the Chain Reaction label all the way back in the 1990s. But since then, he's released fairly regularly, and in my opinion, is one of only a handful of artists that has really mastered dub techno in the sort of full-length album format. And one of the reasons that Fluxion's albums work so well is that he doesn't limit himself to just having them be dub techno. He's perfectly fine veering off into sort of jazzy house takes or entirely ambient sort of beatless tracks, etc. So Parallel Moves, of course, is no exception, but the track that we're listening to is actually the second track on the album, and it's called Soul. So that's a brief tour of some of my favorite tracks in what might be called ambient dub techno. But of course, your definition of ambient dub techno might be slightly different from mine, or you might just have a different set of tracks that you prefer. So if that's the case, don't hesitate to comment below with some of your favorites. Now, as always, there'll be links in the description to where you can buy all of the tracks that were featured uh, in this episode, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.